I went to a small village in South India. This was way back in 1984. There's one uh, wonderful family that loves me too much. So they told me, whenever you come to town, you must visit our house. If not for preaching, at least for a cup of tea. So the family made me make a covenant sign. I said, all right. So that particular one day, so I was in town, so I decided to visit the family. So when I entered into their compound, so they have a large compound and a small house. And this lady, she works as a school teacher, primary school teacher, and her husband is a taxi driver. And they have one little girl. And she was cooking in the kitchen early in the morning. And then I opened the gate and I walk in. And she heard the clicking sound of the gate. And she peered through the window and she saw me walking in. And she left her cooking and came running out to greet me. And as soon as she saw me, she just fell at my feet and she sobbed and she sobbed and she sobbed without saying a single word. And I didn't know why she was crying. And after she composed herself, I just touched her, sister, what's your problem? And she burst into crying again. So this was repeated three times. So each time I would ask her, what's your problem? And anointing is released. She'll burst crying. And when she cried for the third time, I perceived in my spirit that she was under some great distress and a great problem that she could not bring about to speak. You know, you all know very well that when you have pain in your heart, tears is that outward language of the pain that's in your heart. Am I right, everybody? So she, was, she just caught hold of my leg. She cried and she cried and she cried. And my, I could feel her tears wet my feet. So when I realized that something greatly was troubling her, so I just laid my hand on her head. I closed my eyes and I said, Lord Jesus. The next instant, I saw the Lord Jesus standing by my right side. And he asked me, what do you want? I said, Lord, please look at your daughter. And the Lord Jesus stood, stood down, bent very close to where he could see her face. And he saw her, all her tears flowing down. He cupped his hand and put near to her face. And her tears fell into his hand. And there was a small pool of tears in his hands. And he got up and he looked at me and he said, come. The next moment, we were transported to heaven. So, at a distance, I saw what looked like the Ark of the Covenant. So we went a little closer, and then the Lord Jesus told me, you wait here while I'll go yonder to pray. And on the mercy seat, I could see a huge, gigantic cloud, and thunders and lightnings came out of the cloud. And it was moving very, like in a very angry motion manner. And I perceived in my heart that was the presence of the Father God, like the cloud. And the Lord Jesus Christ went before the ark. And he put his hand into his left pocket and took out a bottle. And he put all the tears in the bottle. Have you read that in the Psalms? That day, I saw it with my own eyes. The scripture becoming alive. So that incident convinced me beyond all shadow of doubt that whatever we read in the Bible is all real. Everything is real. Nothing is allegorical. Nothing is spiritual. It's all real. So we must not spiritualize anything. They are all real. And then the Lord Jesus knelt down. He held on to the horns by the Ark of the Covenant and he prayed, sobbing. I could hear his great sobbing. 
He was weeping, sobbing. You know, tears were not coming out of his lips. Only sobbing, great sobbing. And every now and then, he would stretch out his hand and show to the father like that. So, I was wondering, what, what is he doing? Why is he showing his hand like that? So, I did something very naughty, you know. I was told to stand yonder, right? So, I tiptoed very quietly. From that corner, I tiptoed and came and stood where I could see what the Lord was doing. So, I stood still at a distance and just directly facing the ark. And then I saw what the Lord Jesus was doing. He was showing his palm with the big hole in his hand to the Father. He said, look at my, this nail prints. I suffered for my daughter. And then another amazing thing happened. I was shown, although I was still there, I saw from the Father's viewpoint what he was looking. When he saw the hole, you know it's not a scar. It's a big hole in the Lord's hand. When he saw the hole, he saw all the last 18 hours of the Lord Jesus' life. From the moment he was arrested at the Garden of Gethsemane till he died on the cross. All the pain that the Lord Jesus went through. All the weeping, the beating, the spitting, all the agony he saw. The Lord Jesus went through all that. All that for one person. And the Lord cried and he cried and he cried. He said, Father, I went through for my daughter. Look at my suffering. And that move the heart of the Father God. And then a voice thundered. It is granted. Only then the Lord Jesus stopped praying. He got up. He came towards me. And he said, go back and tell my daughter. Her heart is troubled about three things. And he told me what are the three things. He said, tell her. All her tears are wiped away. And all her prayers are answered. So the next moment, I opened my eyes. I was back on earth. So I gently lifted her up and I told her, my dear daughter, these are the three things that are troubling you. Am I right? She said, yes. She said, God has wiped away all your tears. Within one week, all her problems were solved. See, that is the power of the blood of Jesus. If you read Revelation chapter 6, verses 9 to 11, when the apostle John saw a company of martyrs in heaven, they cried out to the Lord, saying one word, Lord, how long more will you not take vengeance on our behalf? See, that's the cry of a martyr, crying for vengeance. And the cry of the blood of Abel, was also vengeance, but not the blood of Jesus. It cries for mercy, mercy, mercy. That is why Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 says, we are not consumed because of the compassions of God. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is ever interceding for us before the presence of God. That is why His grace and mercy is extending to our life all the time. If not, for all the nonsenses that we are doing in our life, don't you think we should have been destroyed long time ago? Yes. Agreed everybody? Yes. For all the mess that we are getting ourselves into, we should have been destroyed by a flip of the Lord's finger. Like how he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, he could have destroyed us from off the face of this world. But we are not destroyed because of the intercessions of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of his blood that sealed the covenant. He not only died on the cross, not only he said a new covenant I make with you, but he sealed that covenant with his own blood.